Ten years ago, a developer had a dream. A dream of a marriage. The marriage between robot framework and JavaScript to automate browsers. He started an awesome project called RoboZombie. But the world was not ready yet. Users were afraid of modernity and refused to accept progress. So it came as it had to come. The users held on their known Selenium library and it became popular and beautiful. But with time the beauty faded and age showed in its face. Now the time had come for the visionary to try to convince people again. It was at a time where everybody was at home because a pandemic had come over the world. So the right people listened to him and decided that he was wise and they wanted to support him in his project. So they sent him off to put together a team and revolutionize the world of browser automation. Now watch the story of browser. Hmm. Python. Node. Too big. Planets of programming. How to combine these? Oh, GRPC. Python. No, yes. Hmm. This could work. So I could basically combine Node and Python with GRPC. Robot Lambs really needs a new browser automation thing. Maybe there would be something in the node land. Maybe this puppeteer would be good. But there maybe called Tatu because he, he knows all about browser automation. calling. Hi Mikko. Hi Tatu. I was thinking about browser automation and robot framework and mm -hmm. was kind of interested in making a new library on on top of node libraries and or no node stuff. Uh, I was thinking about Puppeteer. What do you think about that library? I have heard about it. It's it looks really interesting. My colleague told me about this Playlight library. Cool. Which is basically the same thing as Puppeteer. Okay. But it has uh, better browser support. Yeah. And it's built by Microsoft. And Microsoft bought the people from Google, and they started making Playwright, but uh, but without the Puppeteer history behind it. It has better rating and stuff like that. Have you seen that one? Well, I'm just looking at their website and this seems cool. Uh, would you be interested in trying out making a new library with this, with me? Yeah, it would be interesting to learn about TypeScript and that node world, yeah. which is a little bit unfamiliar for me. Hmm. We might need uh, more people also in this Someone who knows yeah. TypeScript. I, I know actually one one person who, who might be available for this. I'll see if if he what he thinks. So let's call Kerko. Okay. I haven't heard about him. But and we might need somebody who is really enthusiastic with the users. Hi Kerko. Hello. Hi Kerko. Uh we were thinking about creating this new library uh, for robot really? framework called uh, on on top of this playwright technology and grpc and and stuff would you be interested in doing some typescript with us i have no idea about this robot framework but sounds pretty cool okay so is that yes yes okay i think we need more people 
people also. Yes, I know. We need more people. The more, the merrier. Yes. Then there's there's always this in the community. Rene is always really enthusiastic and jumps really nicely to the projects. What do you think about him? And he always complains about bugs, so we yeah. can get free testing out of him. Yes. Sounds sounds useful. Let's invite him also. Yes. Hello. Hey, Miko. Hi, Rene. Uh, hey. Would you be interested in making a new library for browser automation with us? What's wrong with Selenium? Well, Tatu, can you explain? Well, Selenium is Selenium is good and bad. Selenium is you have to wait. You have to. I agree. There's a lot of problems I, with the waiting just, and stuff like that. Just one, one, one question: Does the new technology has any solution for shadow DOM automation? Yes, it has. Oh God, I'm in. I'm I'm so in. I'm just struggling with that shadow DOM stuff. So. Hey, you can count on me. I'm in. Great. Great. What's it called? Maybe we will call it a playwright library. No. I mm. I'm one of my colleagues actually had a good idea. Janne Harkanen said that what 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 if we call it just a browser library? That's cool. Browser automation 2021. Yes. With Robot Framework Browser. Hey, that's cool. Okay. Let's do that. Let's do that. Hi. We are the browser team, and we want to introduce you to the browser library. We will start with Tatu Alto explaining a little bit about the background of browser library and the difference between Selenium library and browser library. Hello. My name is Tatu Alto, and I'm one of the browser library core developers. And I'm here today to talk about the differences between Selenium library and the browser library. And based on our experiments and user feedback, the most notable differences that the user get is the speed. Users have said that if they had one hour testing time with the Selenium library, they have been able to shrink the testing time to 30 minutes. So 50% improvement. Some users have even revealed more that maybe they have one hour testing time and they can shrink that to 10 minutes or 15 minutes. So speed. Users get speed, and that's really cool. And here are some quotes. We made a survey, and people say that, generally people say the first thing, that the speed is the greatest thing. They also say that it's more simply used. You get better test results because there's less false positive, because browser library does, you automatically waiting for elements and stuff in the browser. And people feel that the keyword usage is better, and they are more happier to use that use the library. And but why? Why the browser library is actually faster? We think that one of the key factors is that you have more control how you actually open browsers. In Selenium library, you basically have one keyword, open browser or create web driver to create new browsers. And when you call that keyword in the Selenium library, you actually spawn a new web driver instance. You execute the binary and that binary creation, that binary execution always creates a new profile. So it's actually quite a heavy lifting what the Chromium, Chrome or Fireworks are doing in the background. So it takes a lot of time. In the browser library, there is more control. You define the browser, how you want to launch it. You define a new context, how that context or that profile should be created in that browser. And then there's new page, which basically opens new tabs or new pages into that context. When you launch a new page, it's very, very fast compared to the Selenium library open browser keyword. And because you have that control, you get more speed. You can actually more easily decide that do you want new pages just to navigate somewhere, or do you want new contexts, which is even more which is also faster than the Selenium library open browser keyword, or do you actually need a new browser totally? Perhaps you want a different browser. And that gets you speed. And also the other thing about closing the browsers is that you don't have to actually do that in the browser library. 
we do take care of the garbage collection. Instead of sending library, you have to remember to call and close to all the browsers. Let's have a look how this looks in practice and what impact does that has. Let's assume we start a browser, then we open a new suite and in the suite setup, we open a new context, which means we configure the browser, we have an independent session stage, now we have independent storage. Now in the test setup, we just open a page on that browser context. When that test is over, it automatically cleans up the page and closes it. So the next test can start with a new page, but be aware that page is in the same context. So the session created in the first test will be active in the second test. That can be useful if you want to test that. That can also lead to some kind of strange behavior. So be sure what you want. When that test is over, the uh, page is also closed. When that test suite is over, it automatically closes also that context because the context has been created within that suite. So now let's have a look how it would look like if we have a context and page per test case. So in the test case setup, let's assume we want to have the test completely independent. It would be test case setup, starts a new context, starts a new page. When that test is over, it automatically cleans up context and page, but still be on the same browser. The next test starts with a new context, new page, and when that is over, also that is closed. So now the question comes, when do you don't want to do what and what impact does this has to my performance? So let's have a look how this looks in practice and what the performance would say. What we have here is now basically exactly that situation. In our init, we just create the browser. In our first suite, we use suite setup for opening the context and test setup for opening pages. We have two different tests. This next suite uses open context and page for every test. Same basically in Selenium. Let's just compare how it looks like. So this test is now over. And as you can see here, 240 milliseconds for a browser start is pretty fast. 26 milliseconds for a new context, 150 milliseconds for a new page that it has a blank page without loading HTML. Compared to the Selenium library, where a new context takes 1.7 seconds, these 10 milliseconds can completely be uh, be ignored and you can concentrate on the functionality. So speed is a big advantage in browser library. And then there's a differences in the design. In Selenium library, keywords are like Unix command line tools. They do one thing and they tend to do that one thing really well page should contain, wait that page does not contain, wait until page contains, and stuff like that. There's a keyword for every kind of action. In the browser library, keywords are like multi-tools. They can, every example, get text, can return you the text, and you, you can do something with the text that it returns. But if you just want to see that the text, the text contains something, you can do that in the keyword. You can have asserts. That keyword will also do polling or waiting that the text actually appears in the page. You can do full and partial matches, regular exceptions, many kind of different kind of matches with that single keyword, which is really cool. Less code, better waiting, better handling. And there's also a difference in the installation. They are different. I don't know which one is better or worse, but they're different. In the browser library, it's a two-step install. You install the Python parts with the pip, and then you run RF browser in it. They install the node word. And of course you need Python and node to be pre-installed. But that basically bundles you everything. In Selenium library, you pip install the Python part, and then you manually or automatically, somewhere, perhaps the VM container or somewhere, you install the browsers. You install the browser binaries and other stuff that you need to. And also when the browsers update, you need to manually update the browser drivers and stuff like that. So in the playwright world, we are more tightly integrated. Everything comes in the package with that two step install. But then again, you don't have freedom. When the playwright updates, we have to create a new release for the browser library and get that new stuff rolled into the users. In the Selenium library, you can update the Selenium. You can update the browser more freely. So there's more freedom, but perhaps there's more work. 
And also the other thing difference is that uh, in the browser library, we support the three major operating browser versions, uh, Firefox, Chromium, and Apple Safari. In Selenium library or in the Selenium world, you can choose whatever basically runs in Selenium. You still have IE support and stuff like that, which is fine. But then, on, then again, in this modern world, do you actually need cross-browser testing? In my business line, in my work, last year, we found one bug. It is not worth of effort. So choose your browser, choose your Python, and go with that. And then Kerko is going to talk about us. Here you go, Kerko. Thanks, Tatu. Hello, I'm Kerko, and I'm here to talk about browser libraries tech stack. Uh, we are a multi-language project uh, with Python, uh, Node.js slash TypeScript, and uh, then a bunch of dependencies on those languages. And that does mean that on a system you're installing browser, you will need Python 3.7 or newer, Node 12 or 14, along with the respective package managers. And then you will need to run our installation script, which will install all the uh, actual dependent packages and, and also the browsers. And this does mean that browser library will weigh around 680 megabytes installed. And, uh, which includes the browsers and the patches to those browsers that let you control them. This does mean that you will also not need to manage any sort of web drivers since that is handled by Playwright and the browsers themselves. And next, Mikko and Rene will talk you about some of our coolest new features. Thanks, Kerko. Yes, I directly want to start and show you our awesome selectors. Our default selector is CSS. CSS is really awesome, but it has a limitation that you cannot select element by its text and you can also not go upwards the tree, so upwards the DOM. Um, but otherwise, it's a very cool selector. What you can do is just write CSS equal and then followed by the selector or just start with the selector as long as it does not start with a slash or a double dot, which would even not be a valid CSS, it is CSS. If it starts with a slash or a double dot, it's interpreted as a x pass. You can also do a prefix like x pass equal, but you don't have to. The next selector is directly the ID selector, like ID is equal something. And we have a very cool text selector. The text selector has three different options. The one thing is the automatic stripping uh, option. So uh, it will delete leading and trailing white spaces. The one with the quote means exact match, including the white spaces. And if you have a text starting with a slash and ending with a slash, everything between is interpreted as a regular expression. That's pretty cool. And if you don't want to use the text as equal at the prefix, you can just use quotes, but be, be careful, it's just the exact match. The best thing on browser library is that we can combine these selectors to one unique selector. So we can use these double um, arrows here to combine different kind of selectors. So you could use, you could start with a text selector. Below that element, you could use an X pass to go two elements up in the DOM and then you use CSS. So you can combine CSS with text. You can even combine CSS, then go upwards to parents and then use CSS again. And with a very lot of shortcuts, you can break, uh, build something like this. The next cool thing is browser automatically works with Shadow DOM. If you don't know what Shadow DOM is, you're lucky. If you know what Shadow DOM is, you're lucky too, because browser handles Shadow DOM very well. I don't know any other automation technology that can handle Shadow DOM that well. It automatically peers the Shadow DOMs. It automatically finds the elements within the DOM. You don't have to make the selector the full path. Next, I will talk a little bit about our assertion engines and our getters. And this I want to do on a practical example. Let's assume we have this ticket booking page and we want to verify that this VAT is 24%. Let's have a look to the element. It's a small element within the diff with a class price. So that would cause us this selector class price and the direct children is a small. So we use get text to get that text and it is inkle 24% VAT. So now we want to verify that what we did normally is 
including uh, we get that text, then we verify that it equals something or contains something. But uh, the browser library has the possibility every or most of the getters has assertion possibilities. So you can directly compare this, which means you can directly use, for example, equal equals, and then including 24% VAT. And that was passed, so no error was written. If I used the same stuff with, for example, 25%, it would then get a failure, and I would get an error like here, property in a text, including 24% string, should be including 25% VAT string. So the current one should be the expected one. So how does this work? This part, like get text with a locator, can be assumed as the current value of the element. Then we have our operator, and then we have our expected value behind it. These operators are a specific amount of operators that are allowed. Let's have a look which ones. These are the allowed operators. We can use equal or two equal signs, should be in equal, something like this. And numeric operators can also be verified like less than, greater than, greater than, equals. But you can also use text operators like contains, which is pretty cool here, or starts with or ends with something. You can even use regex for specific match uh, options, or you can use Python evaluations to work with that. That specific ones like regex and Python evaluation, we will show you tomorrow. So what we could do with that operator is, for example, we could also say, okay, it contains 24%, which would also be correct. We could also say, okay, it contains like dot space 24%, which would be cool. So like also get title returns as the title, Robocon get title, starts with, or we could say just like starts with Robocon, which is the right. If we say starts with robot, it would be an error and we would see here the error message. So this is pretty cool because you can do one line assertions. And the next thing is these assertions can also wait for um, stuff that does not appear directly. And that will be shown now by Miko. Assertions in Robot Framework Browser work a bit differently. Basically, they are combined in getter keywords. So instead of doing this, getting a URL and then calling an assertion keyword like should contain here, you, and waiting until that contains or that, that keyword succeeds, we can combine this all with this assertion keyword syntax. So after that get URL, which is part of the browser library, you can give it an argument called contains and then assert a certain thing. For example, here we are asserting that the URL contains Helsinki and all as a points. Uh, by default, these are retried by retried assertion for times of seconds. And here we have set it that to one second. And the thing that we are testing is basically uh, crabhopper.com here. And what is happening in the test case is that we start from Helsinki and make a route to Oulu, which are in Finland. And this should happen. And when we click the search button, it will open open the search and then it will also show these in the URL. But unfortunately, that's not instant. So we have to do this waiting for there. And let's see how these three test cases go. So we can see that the first one actually fails because it's not waiting at all. So the URL change is not automatic after the clicking of search button. And the second one passes, but it's still a bit ugly to do wait until keyword succeeds that wraps this keyword here and then do it like this. And the third one is, is the new assertion syntax. And 
it will also pass as the other one. Let's go and look at the log file. So the first one failed. Wait until keyword succeeds shows that we have actually waited a bit long. Uh, and it's it shows all the waiting. Get URL doesn't show anything special there because it, it it went through during the timeout. So one good thing is also that it will not explode the log file. That's it. Oh, um, did I mention that you can get rid of nearly all your weights that you used wait until element is visible if you use browser library compared to Selenium? That's really cool as well. Hey, experts, welcome to Robocon. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Cool. So let's jump right into it. Awesome session. Everyone's saying it's epic. Uh, first one's from Manny. Manny wants to know, for some reason, my company always wants to test things on Edge as well, even though it uses the Chromium engine. Is there some solution for it in the browser library, or do you need to do some convincing that it's enough to test just on Chromium to cover Edge? Yeah, basically, it's 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 the first case. So basically, you should convince them not not to do it on Edge. Um, but there are uh, possibilities because um, the Chromium is directly compatible with with um, Playwright. Um, so the, the Chrome developer API is compatible. So that should be possible with Edge. And there are um, questions and answers in the Playwright project on GitHub regarding using Edge directly. So the new one, not the old one. Forget the old one. We've also had multi, uh, in the in the robot framework browser Slack. We've already had multiple users who had to test with Edge have successful experiences. Nice, um, uh, Tatu. I know you mentioned that you, uh, you you found one bug testing across multiple browsers. Do you even believe that this is necessary? No, <laughs> no. Well, <laughs> as I said, we found last year one bug, and if I would need to test with different browser prongs, you need to sort the different browser problems. Mm -hmm. And it's not just not worth of the money. You get more test cases when you test with one browser. Of course, you can still manually test, and that's useful investment of money that if you use Monday, Chrome, and Tuesday, you use Firefox. That's fine, and that's what you should do. Yeah, that, that would also be my, my recommendation. T test it automatically on a reference browser and do the exploratory testing with multiple different versions and stuff. Hmm. That's actually what I did user at my old interface. company. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, user interface testing actually requires users. Hmm. Right. That's a good point. <laughs> That's the best quote so far. We should put that. Someone tweet that. Okay, uh, <laughs> next question is from Dave Ma. And Dave Ma says... Uh, browser library. How can I leverage a Selenium grid or other concurrent execution tools with the browser library? <laughs> oh. Wait for some time. <laughs> let, 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 let's say we, we have to brainstorm that on sprints. Right. Yeah. We need always Working something for the that. next release. Awesome. Okay. Is browser library independent of which brow web browser you're using? I would say no, if if someone is, is not answering. So no, the browsers are really dependent. So you have these three browsers that are working with the browser library. That's the Firefox, the um, Safari, or better, the WebKit. So an own compilation of WebKit open source, which is the engine below Safari. And there is Chrome. And there's a Chromium. Um, you can, however, connect Chromium-based some of them engines. For example, also for Electron, there are discussions on it, but it's definitely um, connected to a specific version also. So a specific version of Playwright, which is a technology, is bound to a specific version of that specific Firefox build. So you can even use the real normal Firefox because there is some APIs missing. Great. Our next question is, if my application is very slow, uh, the ideal, are you, which one is better, a browser library or a Selenium library? I would actually say 
browser because when your application is slow, you have to wait a lot and you have to synchronize with your slow application. And there is definitely browser library better than Selenium. Okay. Next question is, can you open browser in Selenium library and then use, uh, it just went away, uh, use keyword from browser library, for example, drag and drop. Let me know if I need to. No, you cannot. No, no, you can't. Okay. Let's say no. <laughs> is it safe to already to migrate to browser library from Selenium? Like how confident are you in this first release? Yes, it is. <laughs> Many people have migrated nice. already. Yeah. The Slack channel has currently 272 people oh, wow. there, and we have been alive for at least six or seven months. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I think 1.0 was like, yeah, six months ago September, or so, yeah. seven maybe. So, yeah. Can you install browser offline, example, on a system that is not connected to the internet? Yeah, you have, you have to do the, 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 the install or, and the, the NPM packages. For, uh, you have to download them, but then you can transfer it. So you can can create a binary package on your own, or you can use Docker. Okay. Cool. Like we provide a Docker image with Rower Framework Browser. Is Node still required? Yes. Yes. How does the browser library work with our uh, Robot Framework 4.0, especially with skip functionality? Or is everything it doesn't fine, care. fine and dandy? Yeah. <laughs> nice. Well, this is like a lightning round. Um, ba -ba -ba can you open several independent browser windows in browser library? Yeah, yeah you can. Like, and then you yes. can switch between those and you can close them. Much, much and... better than on others' <laughs> technologies. <laughs> <laughs> Not naming them. <laughs> so, oh. Because I know this was a quick Q&A, like, but we just have a limited amount of time. We have a few more questions, but uh, during our community breaks, our speakers will be in the lounge just during the community break, so you can hit them up if you have any other questions that we may have missed. So thank you all for this awesome, epic session. Everyone really loved this style, so you put a lot of effort into it, and we appreciate it. Thank you so much. So Thanks, we Rena. choose the dark side? Yeah, do you want the light we side or the dark, dark side? side? All right, the no, dark side. The yes. Dark side. All right, so dark check them side. on the dark side during the community break, which will be up in a after the next session. All right, thank you all. Appreciate it. See you. Thanks. See you.